when we start to look at uh, what we would describe as an uncertain world, there are components which some are new and interesting that have come out, especially in our discussions with retailers and brands recently over the last couple of days. One is sales history. How do you understand and define what is sales history? How do you project forward into markets that you've not been in before as to what your expectations might be? And that's one of the fundamental challenges that we see going forward. Another interesting one is optimum footprint. It's interesting today that brands are starting to ask them, themselves in certain markets, should I not consider adapting my concept? Track record for franchisees, local partners is also a big conversation. And then the ones we normally know about, operating costs, return on investments, what are those going to look like? So are the vintage days over? Who holds the secrets? Is it indeed Victoria's Secrets um, and their new foray into the UK and maybe beyond? Or is it something that we can share, which is the consumer? The consumer is back. That is great news. And as you've heard me say on many occasions, it's the female customer that drives our business. So she is the one that is back in cautious forms, in specific locations, catering to her needs. But at the same time, what we've come across is you can't cater to the masses. You can't provide everything for everybody in the same locations. The good news is there are more shopping centers being built in various markets across the globe. That is good news. But the issue is still lack of real estate. How do we source real estate? That has been one of the biggest questions that we have had um, on our stand over the last two days, is how do I get access to quality real estate in shopping centers and in high streets across different markets? One of the, um, the, the reports that we did which is called How Active Are Retailers Across EMEA, and um, those copies are available either in executive form or the full version, which we invite you to, uh, to, to, to come and see us and, and collect. We surveyed 203 retailers, and basically we asked them many questions about where they want to go and what they want to do in 2011. And one of the first and most important aspects is confidence has returned. The other big news consolidation. There is more consolidation within the market. And what I mean by that is retailers are wanting to enter more cities in existing markets rather than going to new markets themselves. It is internationalization. That continues to be the theme going forward. The intention is to, become, to come back sorry, to own stores. The intention is not to continue franchising to the same degree as was done before. Online retailing, that has become a bigger issue than it was. The brands who, as I mentioned earlier on, new ones come into the market, but are established brands like H&M, Zara, and Ralph Lauren, they have started their own online activity as well, which is uh, encouraging. And the final element is globalization. Globalization uh, to the extent that brands are still seeking to be in many different markets simultaneously. So to conclude then, it is still a challenging time for, for retailers. There's no doubt about it. Uh, we're not out of the woods yet, but it is clear that there is a better mood. There is a greater desire to succeed, and that is encouraging for all of us in this room. The consumers still remain cautious. They are out there. They are shopping. Employment or unemployment has improved in most markets, so that's a considerable um, positive element, and also the fact that there is a better feel-good, feel I would say, factor. We still have what we explained last year, a flight to quality, which means going to the stronger markets, especially the Western ones, although Poland has popped its way in there uh, over the last couple of years, which is good news. But, and really significantly, the emerging markets is back on track. There's still a reduced development pipeline, but we expect that over the next four or five years, in other words, looking out to 2015, uh, to be even more uh, attractive going forward. The message that came out last year is that there was a sense in which the fog was lifting. We agreed that um, we were not going to go back to the old normal. But at that time, there was a sense of some new normal needs to emerge, but we still didn't know what it was going to be. So what, what is this new normal? And do we know more this year than we knew uh, last year? There's a lot of talk about the, the new consumer, but I, I 
I'm not sure I buy it, actually. Uh, what I know for a fact is we are in a period of slower economic growth. Maybe we are out of the crisis, but we agree that we will not be booming as fast as we had in the recent past. And in this environment, we know the consumers are spending less. We also understand that there are returns to being smart in our retail strategies. And the other thing we know is that there's nothing like competition to foster innovation. So we're going to approach this consumer in different ways and be smarter about it, because if we're not, then the competitor will take over. New ad MAPIC this year is some emerging, fast-growing economies where there is much to be learned about making retail real estate space available and much to be learned about structuring the economy around a vibrant commercial retail the way we have it in the West. And, and the example I would pick on here at MAPIC is the first participation of the booth next door to us, uh, India. Interestingly, the message from India, if you were in this room when they presented, was very similar to the message from, from Asia at MIPM Asia last week in Hong Kong. The message was, come and visit us and understand the diversity of who we are. Like, people speak different languages around India. There's like 15 regions. There's the, the real side of retail, what I would call the growing maturity, the markets like, like Turkey. And what we hear and what we see is more of the retail moving into the neighborhood. It's not the, the big destination outside of town like in Egypt. It's more integrating retail you know, within a large mixed-use project, which is both a destination, but where the neighborhood itself and the local residents contribute to make the destination attractive. And then, of course, there are these this mature markets. There, what we see is retail being integrated, integrated with the full spectrum of real estate, the residential and the office together with the retail, integrated within the urban and the historical environment. How can retail play a role in regeneration of historical neighborhoods? And integrated within the political geography. And this, I think, is an important point where we see the, the cities understanding that they need to have a new relationship with the retail partners. The cities understand that they benefit from an integrated approach where the integration takes place on many fronts. Integration of land use within the location across property types but also integration across locations within an urban area. That's for the retail, the real side. What about the virtual side? It's this beast, the internet. We hear a bit of comfort in understanding that it is really a complement. It has a role to play in addition to the, the real side of, of, of the, the retail component because it's multifunctional. It's about a different way to, act, to give information to our consumers, a different way to extract information from our consumer. It's clearly a way to bring the uh, consumer to the store and to complement the store offering. If, if you don't have the particular size you need, the website is in the store and we can access it and deliver it to you. But there's one thing that everyone who's tried agrees it works. It's in-store pickup of web orders. A great way to sell more, to sell better products, but also a great way to start a relationship. But there are great innovations that are coming our way. I think they are coming from this integration. I see as a key challenge that the politicians need to understand, they need to talk to each other to really be able to, to frame and, and provide certainty as we go forward for all these innovations coming from the, the private sector. And I think the other big one is this mobile internet being everywhere. And you know, we heard about people here developing strategies on the internet. But, but I think they were thinking about the internet as me in front of my desktop at home with my big screen and my mouse. And, and, and they were not thinking about me with my, my Blackberry. And, and this is where going back to, to India, being here for the first time and maybe learning from us, but this is maybe we need to go back to India and learn from them because they'll tell you how to do it with their IT outsourcing companies and they already have uh, people buying stuff from their uh, mobile Blackberries and, and, and iPhone. And, and to me, this is the next challenge is the internet we don't understand what it is today, but tomorrow is already different, and, and just go visit other countries and see, and see, see what I mean.